Yo guys and welcome to yet another video on my channel now today hopping straight back into zombies for yet another video Now today i'm going to be giving you a full guide on how to do the d machine at easter egg This is going to be a solo guide obviously you can do this as a group But this is aimed mostly at solo players So if you want to do this on your own you can do it super easily Now as always before we get into the guide if this guide does end up helping you out Or you enjoy the content on this channel be sure to drop a like and a sub it helps this channel out so much but Anyway let's get straight into the guide now, obviously, starting off this challenge will be in the first room. I recommend staying there till around round six. Then on round six, what you want to do is head out of there and go towards the Pack-A-Punch. This way, you can turn the power on, set up the Pack-A-Punch, and get all that stuff sorted, since that will be the first step you need to do. Also, something you can do at the same time whilst doing that is still on round six. You can actually do the Coffin Dance Easter Egg. This will obviously gives you some extra stuff to help you out, like Juggernaut, some Scrap and some points also you could potentially get the ray gun which would obviously make the final boss fight of this easter egg super simple later on now when you're coming into round seven you want to place yourself in the weapons lab this is because you actually need to go down here and fill up this canister with the dog fumes and since round seven is the first dog round it's the easiest to do it so just wait for the dogs to come in get them nice and close i think you only need one but i like to kill a few more just in case it doesn't do it the first time also if you're solo there's only like five dogs so it's really not a threat to be honest with you so just kill the dogs close to that. I know you need to get a canister to fill it up in there later on. However, you don't actually need the canister to fill up the chamber above where you put the canister in. And then literally moving into the next round, which is round eight, you'll actually get the boss zombie spawn for the first time. So head over to the pond where this spore is on the tree, as you can see in front of me. And all you want to do is get the boss zombie to shoot at it with his beam sort of thing. Not exactly what it's called, but once he shoots it, it will glow purple and you'll know you've done it right. Then once it's glowing purple, you can literally just take the boss zombie out and take out his two lower forms and then just pick up the golden key card that drops on the ground. Then once you've picked up that golden key card, you want to head straight back down to the weapons lab to open this drawer I'm opening right here and pick up the item inside of it. With that item, you can head back to the main building on the roof, which is obviously Nectar and Totem, and go into this wall here and you can actually activate a trap which will start to suck in the zombies through the gap in the wall. You need to get about 10 to 15 zombies in that trap. If it goes on cooldown, don't worry, you can just reset up again once it's cooled down. Then once it's charged up, go back to the hole you activated it in the first place, and it'll blow off the door, and in there is the wonder weapon that we need for the rest of the Easter egg. You can obviously get it out of the box, but this is just the easier way to get it, and the 100% secure way. You're going to get it all the time. At this point, now you've acquired the shockwave, you want to go to the roof of Nectar and Totem, shockwave off this box, and then run down here and pick up this canister with the right click, it'll suck it towards you. Where the box fell off, there'll be a vial on the ground now, you want to pick up that vial, straight away turn around and just go pull it under that tree where the spore is on, and the spore will drip into the vial and start to fill it up. Now since that will actually take a little while to do, you can actually take this time to take the canister we just got, go to where we filled up the canister on the wall earlier on, Put the canister in so it fills up, pick that up, and then once you've done that, you can head back over to the vial and pick that up, and you'll have two items for two upgrades for the shockwave. The first upgrade location is right next to the crash site. Just put the canister on top of this box, shoot it, and then you can open it up and put the upgrade into your gun. And then the second one where we'll be placing the vial is inside the medical bay. Just put it inside this box, it'll melt the chains off, and then there's another upgrade in there. For the next step on the map, there will be a hint to go into the ether once again. So once you enter the ether, there will be three parts we need to get for an ether scope. The first part will just be here under these little stairs in the spawn room. The second part is located in the main power room just near the Pack-a-Punch right here. And the third part is located on top of this plane. Now they can spawn in random orders. However, if you run fast, you can get all three parts in one run. And you don't have to skip rounds to go back into the ether to collect more of them. Since you've obviously got all parts for the ether scope, you want to go craft it just below Pack-a-Punch right here. As soon as you pick that up and crafted it, there will be a portal that spawns in the medical bay. You want to enter through that. And then literally in this room right next to the medical bay, there'll be a notebook on the desk. And then after that, go underneath the room you're in and there'll be a dude to talk to or a ghost. Also a big boss zombie will spawn, but you can spray him down with your shockwave super easily if you've got an upgraded part in it. Now you actually don't have to listen to the guy that you're talking to. Once you've given him the notebook and he started talking and doing his cutscene, you can just ignore him. Go straight to where the trial room is. There'll be another ether ghost in there. And then the third and final ether ghost is just below the Pack-a-Punch. Once again, you don't need to listen to them. Just literally give them the book. Get them to start talking and run on to the next one. Because you want to do this fast, otherwise you'll be teleported out. And you'll have to skip some rounds to re-enter to talk to the other ghosts. 
After you've left the ether once again, just go back to the medical bay computer and type in the password. You don't have to actually remember anything, just literally press on it and it'll type it in for you. At this point, if you look on the map, you'll see two portals have spawned. So starting off with the portal at the pond, if you go through that one and you run back towards the crash site, underneath the floating plane, there'll be a little box. If you just shoot it, a fuse will be in it. Then with that fuse, you want to go back down to the weapons lab where you did the dog sort of thing going on where you're filling up the gas chamber and just put the fuse in here and it'll cut open this box. That will cause this box on the bay of this truck to open up for another shockwave upgrade. Then going through the portal just below Pack-A-Punch, this will be for the electricity upgrade on your gun. What you want to do is go over to the roof on Nactar and Toten and pick up the gem over here. Just suck it up with your shockwave. Then head back towards where you first entered the portal and in this corner right here, there'll be a little box. If you shoot it with what you've just sucked up, you'll see a light turn on. We need to do that two more times. So the next gem is in the pond right here. Just suck that up and put it into the box. And the other gem is here at the crash site. Suck that up and put it into the box. This one actually might take two trips to the ether like it did for me. I started on round 10 and finished it in round 11. But you can just hop back in and out really easily if you miss one or two. Moving on to the next part, since now we have all the elements for the shockwave wonder weapon, what you want to do is go to this chamber and shoot on the bottom of it with the color coordinated thing that links to the element in your gun. So obviously yellow for electric, blue for ice, red for fire, so on and so forth. The colors are a bit crusty on the thing, so they're a bit annoying to see, but they definitely are faintly there. Once you've shot all four of the things with the different elements, before we go any further, I highly recommend you going back under Pack-A-Punch and getting the electricity upgrade back in your gun, since that will be best for the final boss fight or killing any enemies while you're going around the map doing the rest of the parts. But straight after that, as you saw, there's a portal that's opened up in the medical bay. Enter through that and go talk to these people right here. At the end of the cutscene, you'll be taken out of the ether. There'll be a wrench on the ground. Pick that up. With that wrench, you want to go back to the spawn where this tank is located. Hit the tank three times with the wrench, so make sure you interact with it three times. A zombie will pop out the top, you can kill that zombie. And where that zombie came out, just throw a piece of explosive equipment like a Semtex, C4 or grenade, whatever you can do. And the tank will fire off into the distance if you know you've done that right. And over at the crash site where the tank hit a tree with its cannon shot, as you can see a golden orb has dropped. Dogs will spawn, you can shoot them. Once you pick up the orb, you won't really be able to defend yourself, so just keep on running. If you have stamina, you should be fine. Obviously, it'll be a lot easier if you're not on your own, but this is a solo guide. So just saying, you can outrun the dogs with stamina, and if you have Juggernaug, you're all good. You just want to take the orb to the medical bay, put it in this slot. The dogs might hit you a few times here also, so just jump down the gap, climb up the other side, and shoot them as they climb up really easily. With the next part, you might actually have to go through a few rounds before you can actually do it because you need to get a boss zombie. Once you've acquired a boss zombie, you need to make sure it's split into two, then not kill both of those versions. Then bring that boss zombie over to the medical bay because you basically need to get it sucked up into the chamber we've been messing with the whole easter egg. To do this, you literally just lure them underneath right in the center and they both just get sucked up easily. Nothing really to it. Then once that's done, just go back up to the computer where you've typed in the password. Activate that and a cutscene will happen where the two zombies basically merge into one dude. Finally on the last step before the boss fight, this is sort of a no going back situation so make sure you stop up on things like monkeys, ammo or the type of shockwave you want to take into the final fight. Once you've done that, go through this portal in Nact and then go around the corner in Nact still right next to where the pistol wall by is and talk to this ghost. Now you want to stay quite close to this ghost because as soon as he stops talking, you'll get teleported out of the ether and he'll drop a photo, pick that photo up instantly, and you'll be taken into the boss fight. When it comes to the boss fight, I would basically just recommend on keeping yourself alive. I'm pretty sure because since I'm on round 16, the guy actually takes no damage because he was getting hit by zombies quite a bit. Wasn't really losing any health. Obviously, check up on his health bar every now and then, but my guy literally lost no health. So I would just say make sure you keep yourself alive. Also using the shockwave with the electricity is a really good tip because that beams down the bosses super fast and obviously one taps the dogs. So it's just super easy to use. And what you've all been waiting for is obviously the last step of the Easter egg. The machine will start to break down after he's destroyed it all. It, all you'll have to do is run to where you would extract usually. You don't have to kill any zombies. However, you might have to shoot some to get out your way. Just make sure you keep dodging the blue beams. If you touch those, you're going to go down instantly. And just run all the way to where you extract normally, as I've said. You don't need to kill a certain amount of zombies. So hop straight on the helicopter, get out of there, and the Easter egg is done.
But anyway, that is my full guide on how to do the Easter egg on the Machina solo. Obviously, you can do it as a group if you want to, but I wanted to show how solos can do it on their own super easily. I mean, we did it all before round 16, so it's not going to be really that hard. But if this video did help you out, as always, be sure to drop a like and a sub down below. Helps this channel out a lot. But I'm going to end the video there. Have a good one.